Hypertrichosis. It's a word I find hard to say, but due to its rarity, it likely isn't in anyone's common vernacular. This disease afflicts only about 50 to 100 people on Earth currently, leading to its poorly understood nature. Informally, it will be named Werewolf Syndrome, and it will fit perfectly in with our last episode where we covered Vampire Syndrome. So let's get to the disease and how it affects the human form. Looked upon with fear back during the Middle Ages, this is arguably where the tales about werewolves and things that lurk in the dark stemmed from. Because obviously, we don't have actual werewolves running around. These people afflicted with this particular disease were the ones who would be looked at and feared by the general population, simply due to scientific ignorance and a general lack of education that was quite prevalent during those times. In today's era, we would like to think that we are more accepting, but old habits appear to die hard. People with this disease are seen and usually shunned or avoided, and even as recently as the 19th century were put into freak shows concerning any type of circus, such as Bailey and Barnum. Is it fair? No. Is it human nature? Yes. So what are we looking at concerning a person who is afflicted? First, structurally, there are not too many changes with the body that this particular disease imposes. Usually considered to be more cosmetic than anything, this is not to say that it doesn't have any other effects. Typically, it will cause patches of hair to grow on the body where it is not usually seen. The hair is characterized as lanugo, which is unpigmented, fine, and soft, and is typically about 3 to 5 centimeters in length. There are more aggressive forms of the disease leading to more widespread hair, and then there are less prominent prominent forms which will yield finer hair further distances away from one another. Other traits seen with this disease appear to be larger gums and poor teeth prominence in those gums. This does not have too much of a profound effect on the person concerning difficulties eating, but it suggests that there is more going on here than just hair growth when it comes to the body and traits displayed. Currently, there seems to be about two ways a person can present this ailment. The first is that it's inherited from an autosomal dominant method. In fact, four generations of Burmese family, known as the Sacred Family of Burma, have suffered from CH. It began in 1826 when they lived in the court of Ava, which is a province in Burma. This family had a very high rate of passing along the hypertrichosis gene, leading to a much hairier family. The other way to actually get this disease is via certain medications or exposure to chemicals. Recently in Spain, actually, there was an outbreak of hypertrichosis due to a mistake by a pharmacy. They had originally thought they were handing out omiprozol to children to combat indigestion and acid reflux. What they were actually giving to children was minoxidil. This chemical is important in the treatment of alopecia and hair loss, so basically Rogaine. They were giving kids Rogaine. In adults, this can cause your hairline to return to its original growth points. In children who have all their hair, it can cause this hair to become thicker and begin growing more quickly. This led to a lot of ape men children after the fiasco and a lot of angry parents. In fact, the interesting part about this is now Spain has roughly 20% of all the known cases on Earth right now concerning hypertrophy trichosis because 20 people, or at least roughly 20 people, became afflicted with this disease, and there are only about 100 cases known worldwide. A thing to note about the disease is it may not be a permanent cosmetic deficit. If a child has inherited this disease, the hair could be caused by hormonal issues or improper signaling to the hair follicle. However, with the flood of hormones that the child will experience once they enter puberty, this can almost cause a washout effect within the body and reset the signaling, fixing the issue. This is not to say that this will always happen, however. You may notice that when you inner puberty, hair started getting thicker. This androgen-induced hair growth is a natural part of growing up, but it appears that the disease can have an effect on this, making it worse. Even still, what are the effects of the disease down to a genetic level and then working their way out? It appears as though specifically the gene is inherited through what is what we believe to be the X chromosome. It is a dominant gene, so interestingly, much like having six fingers is a dominant gene in humans, it is rare, so the disease is not actually too prevalent. Tracking outside of what we were talking about to go on a side tangent, if you are confused about its dominant gene, status, this may go all the way back to our ancestors when we did have more hair. Once upon a time, the hair growth was important to our survival, and we really didn't have clothing, so we relied on hair to keep us warm, much like any other animal does. Over time, our hair became finer and finer, but really, we kept this hair in terms of actual amount of hair follicles. In fact, you may be surprised that you sitting there, you are probably about as hairy as a chimpanzee, but the only difference between you and them, apart from a larger brain, taller stature, you know, higher up the evolutionary chain, is that your hair is much finer and less pigmented than theirs. So in essence, we are just as hairy as our predecessors, but the only reason we aren't walking around like ape men right now is because the recessive gene that the 99.99999% of the population carries will make us appear less hairy. The gene inherited causing hypertrichosis, which I'm going to shamelessly utilize something that Chubby Emu does because it's a good way for information to stick in people's brain, hyper meaning high, beyond, or excessive, and trichosis meaning any disease that causes abnormal hair growth, despite it not really being 
being used in the medical field in really that kind of capacity is known to cause this disease. So when the hair follicle starts to be either influenced during a person's formation of the womb or due to medicines such as minoxidil, fine hair follicles all over the body will engage in the angiogen phase of growth. This will cause them to begin growing outwards, but also cause cells neighboring the papilla to begin producing new hair fibers. As we see in the Vampire Syndrome episode concerning skin pigmentation, the same process is similar concerning hair. Typically in fine hairs, pigment will not move into the hair, but in this disease, the hair is flooded with it, making it much like the hair on the top of your head. This pigmentation gives the characteristic look of a wolf man. Ultimately, the disease can plague certain strains of families by their genetics. Certain inherited dominant genes have rendered the thick growth of hair that is apparently very rare for a person to grow, at least on visible parts of their body. And also, certain medications have been known to kick off this growth as well. So a bit of an update, I will be moving to my new house in about five days. When I get there, I plan on actually getting a relatively decent camera, some lighting, and a green screen. My attempt is going to be something covering science, but more talking in front of a camera and utilizing graphics as well. So I hope you guys will enjoy that when I get it up and running. Anyhow, I want to thank you guys for watching. Expect different types or different styles of videos in the future, and I will see y'all in the next one.